dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring George Murphy in History in the Making, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is your host, our Theater of Stars producer, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Proudly We Hail, where your favorite star appears each week in the story you'll want to hear I don't know whether George Murphy possesses the luck of the Irish, but he certainly has the charm and the talent. And it's our good luck, indeed, to star him in our proudly we hail story, History in the Making. In this engaging comedy, you'll hear George Murphy as Kelly Jones, debonair New York lawyer who listened to a lovely librarian quoting history and heard the sound of wedding bells. The curtain for Act One in a moment, but first, Wendell Niles. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your army. Yes, the men in the regular army and U.S. Air Force are in uniform because you want them there. And as long as you realize the need of well-trained men in the armed forces, the army and Air Force will continue their work of maintaining the peace. Never again must we be caught unprepared. Preparedness means strength, and strength means freedom from aggression and conflict. And now at the microphone, our producer. And now... Act One of History in the Making, starring George Murphy as Kelly Jones. <music> Kelly Jones was a very successful young lawyer in New York City, the catch of the season and quite the man about town. His table was always reserved at the Stork or 21. He had a racing sloop on the Sound, he had an elegant apartment on Park Avenue, and he also had a fabulous chauffeur named Butch. Oh, yes. Let's don't forget Butch. Butch was odd in many ways, but he was faithful, and Butch and I understood each other perfectly. He was always there when I needed him, just as this afternoon as I came out of my office building, he was waiting for me with the car. How'd it go today, boss? Oh, it's an awful bad day, Butch. Both secretaries sick at home. Uh, busy, huh? Yeah, yeah, like a cat in a fish market. Yeah, me too. You know, I shine this car until the reflection give me sunspots. Oh, it's good work. Keep it up. If I do, I gotta get sunglasses. Hey, where to, boss? Home? No, no, uh, the public library. Yeah, first. okay. The library? Yeah, yeah, I've gotta look up something. Uh, yeah, what a day. Gee, I'm tired, but... However, tonight... Tonight, I'm on my own. Uh, you going out, huh, boy? Well, I was considering it very seriously. Yeah? Uh, who, who's the lucky girl this day? Well, I don't know yet, Butch. I'll tell you, let's, uh, let's consult the little old black book. Mm, I don't keep no little black book. No? They can get you in lots of hot water. <laughs> you think so? Sure, but <laughs> just out of curiosity, I wouldn't mind looking at yours sometime. <laughs> you mean again, don't you? Oh, I, <laughs> I didn't think you knew. <laughs> but, hey, boss... You don't put the telephone numbers down. No, no. Those I memorize. Yeah? Yeah, look, here we are. Uh, let's see. Uh, Betsy, vivacious, excitable, likes to dominate. Yeah, how true. Anne, tender, gentle, understanding. Mm. And Vassar, too. Very proud of her alma mater yet. Uh, Barbara, assured, resolute, likes to cook and sew. Yeah, what a trio they are. But you know, boss... They're after all your dough. Oh, don't editorialize, Butch, please. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, by the way, I seen that picture of you in the paper. <laughs> One of the ten classiest dressers in America. My boss. Did you get a kick out of that, Butch? Oh, I sure did. But you know what? Huh. I was thinking, boss, what a shame. You getting elected to that and me going around looking like a poor man's being crossed. Now, wait a minute. I know that this is leading up to something. What is it? It's like raising salary, isn't it? New suit, readily possible. <laughs> hey, I suggest that you speak to me about it in the morning. Okay, boss. We'll negotiate it on the way to the office. Good, good enough. Well, uh, pull up now. Here, here's the library. Yeah, right. I won't be long. No, oh, please, please. You're in the public library. Oh. You don't have to whistle. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just came from a dog show. Mm -hmm. As force of habit, you know. 
uh, oh, oh, uh, could I get some information from, um, from that young lady over there? Her desk is marked information. Oh, yes, yeah, so it is, sure. Uh, uh, I've forgotten her name again. She was Miss... Uh... Uh, Miss Edwards. Yes, yes, really, how nice. Thank you. Well, I hope you get the information you're seeking. Oh, so do I, so do I. May I help you? Uh, yes, Miss Edwards, uh, if you will. Uh, how do you do? I'm, uh, I'm Kelly Jones. Oh, yes, you're the lawyer. I, I've seen your picture in the paper. You have? Uh-huh. Well. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, well, now, uh, there was something. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Um, you see, I'm preparing an argument in a mm -hmm. case, uh, and I need something from history, a, a sort of a patriotic quotation. Oh, well, I know I can help you on that. Since working here, I've become very interested in American history. Well, I've just become interested, too. Yes. Uh, well, now, uh, uh, what specifically did you want? Well, um, perhaps an expression of what the word liberty meant to some famous American. Oh, well, how wonderful that you'd want to use that, especially now that the blessings of our liberty are so important. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, oh, oh, I know I can help you very quickly. Let's see, uh, there's Thomas Jefferson in the Bill of Rights, uh, Daniel Webster, Washington, or, well, if you'd like a poet, Walt Whitman. Oh, that'd be wonderful, sure. Uh, maybe you could recite a few of his poems for oh, me. well, not from memory. Uh, well, uh, what I mean to say is, uh, uh, why don't you get a bunch of them together? Well, and, I don't know. And Mr. then I could come back and pick you up. Uh, uh, that is, I could pick them up. Oh, but really, you see, Mr. the library Jeff doesn't close until 9 o'clock, so you'll have plenty of time but to I get hardly a, well, and it's all settled. Well, that's wonderful. I'll be back for you at night. Could it be possible? Seventh Heaven in the public library. Ah, but it was. And I don't mean the book. She was like a rare piece of mice, only warm and clear-cut and honest. Seeing her was like coming out of a cold, dark tunnel into the sunshine and feeling its warmth. I went home and dressed. I was excited. I counted the minutes until it was time to return. Where to, boss? The public library, Butch. Well, we just came from there. That's swell. Then you'll know the way. Come on, come on, get going. Sometimes I just don't see the light. Miss Edwards, uh, this is Butch. Oh, how do you do, Butch? Likewise. Hey, uh, boss. Yes? Eureka. All right, all right, Butch. Very well. Let's go. Let's get underway. Uh, it's now about the quotations, Mr. Jones. Uh, uh look, after, after all, we've known each other all afternoon. Uh, couldn't you just make it, uh... uh Kelly? Yeah, sure. <laughs> all right, Kelly. Uh, I, I, I have all those that I mentioned in the library and uh, more. Uh, the George Washington quotation, for example. All right, let, let's hear that. The love of liberty is interwoven with every ligament of the heart. My golly, that is it. That's exactly what I wanted. The love of liberty is interwoven with every ligament of the heart. Oh, it says so much, doesn't it? The story of nations. You know, I dare say you've given me the key to a winning brief. Oh, I'm glad. And now that you have, uh, what do we do? How about some dinner? Oh, I'm sorry, no. I I've eaten earlier. Well, then what? Home. Oh, is there such a word? Must there be such a word? <laughs> I'm afraid so. Well. A slow beginning, to be sure, but a beginning. I called her the next night. No luck. But a couple of nights later, she agreed to go out. She got off early, and I was able to find out a little more about her. She was from Iowa, Littleton, Iowa, where they grow orchids in cornfields. Well, one orchid at least. Are you enjoying your dinner? Oh, it's very nice. Candlelight becomes you. Thank you. You haven't been in New York very long, have you? About uh, six months. Well, what do you think of it? <laughs> well, at first, it, it scared me a little. So big and so many strange people. I, uh, I guess I was lonely. Oh, if I had only known. But, you know, lately, for some reason, I've almost decided I like New York. Oh? Uh-huh. It must be that new book I'm reading, Ashley's History of the Republic. Oh, and then, of course, it's, well, it's nice to have a good friend like you. Oh, is it? Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad to be counted in, even as an afterthought. Oh, well, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, you've helped me so much. 
Why, when I first came in on that train, I wanted to turn around and go right back home. Oh, that would have been disastrous. Well, even now, sometimes when I pass Grand Central, it, it's a struggle. Now, don't say that. Don't even think about it. From now on, New York is your home. You, you have everything to make it the friendliest place possible. Everything? Well, sure. You've got Ashley's History of the Republic and me. <laughs> I didn't like to hear Jerry talk of going back home. I didn't want her anywhere except in my arms. For a while, it worried me. But the nights that followed were encouraging. And then, one unforgettable night, we ended up, of all places... Coney Island. All right, folks, hit the bottles. Win a Cupid now. Three balls for it, hey, I Yeah, uh, Give me three more, three will you, mister? Oh, there you are, sir. Oh, Kelly, not again. Yes, sir, <laughs> I'm going to win a dollar if it takes all night. It looks like it will. <laughs> oh, you missed. <laughs> oh, missed again. Oh. Hey, hey, hey there. Wait a minute. You're breaking up the merchandise on the wall. I'm sorry. No, wait, I'm wait, sorry. wait, wait a minute. Stop, stop, stop huh? already. Huh? Now, here's a doll for you. Anyone who spends $30 gets one on the house. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you're not pitching for Brooklyn. Oh. Yeah, you are. Pitching for Brooklyn. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh. Are you having fun, Oh, darling? wonderful fun. You like your doll? Uh-huh. You like me? Of course. Jerry, I can't tell you how grateful I am for walking into the library the other day and meeting you. Oh, I'm glad, too. Had I been able to quote Thomas Jefferson or Dan Webster, it never would have happened. No, it wouldn't have. Jerry... There's something I, I'd like to tell you. I've been on a cloud ever since I first saw you. Oh, Kelly. No, no, I mean it. <laughs> oh, there must be others. No, no, darling, there are no others. There's no one but you. Kelly, I... Kelly, I, I, I'd like to believe you. Jerry, darling, you have to believe me. You must believe me. Oh, Kelly. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> We took the long way home with the redoubtable Butch steering the way. Long there, I was thinking of Judge Patterson. I wanted him to perform the ceremony. After we said goodnight, I got back into the car. And believe me, I was on top of the world. And Butch, who was no mean opportunist, was quick to sense it. Hey, uh, boss, I've been uh, wondering. That little uh, subject of salary uh, we was discussing. Oh, don't mention it again, Butch. You've got it, my boy. You've got it. Ten bucks. Ten bucks? Oh, geez, what a little moonlight will do to a man's pocketbook. What was that? Hey, that's uh, philosophy, boy. Skip it. Well, anyway, now I'll get me a new suit. <laughs> oh, by the way, boss, uh, Clarice was calling you all day today. She's back in town. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Butch, but I'm not into Clarice. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I told her, but you know Clarice. She's the persistent type. Well, it won't help her, Butch. This is it, Butch. This is it for keeps. Yeah. Jerry, huh? Yeah. Oh, very sweet girl. Oh, you said it. Yeah, I hope it don't happen. What? I hope she don't go on the list like all the rest. Quote, Betsy, vivacious, excitable, and so gentle and understanding. Wait a minute. Unquote. Wait a minute, Butch. Stop the car. Huh? My book. Huh? My little black book, it's gone. Oh, you must have dropped it somewhere. I could have lost it at Coney Island. Yeah, and it could have slipped out of your pocket at Jerry's house. Oh, no, don't say that. I knew that book would get you into trouble. Never mind. Get back to Jerry's quick. Turn the car around. Get back to Jerry's. We talk briefly from our story, History in the Making, starring George Murphy, to bring you an important message. Here you are, veterans. A lot of you have been asking for this, and here it is. Many of you can now serve with your old outfit. Eight Army units now in the United States are looking for qualified men. If you have served outside this country since September 2nd, 1945, you are eligible to apply for enlistment with one of these outfits. The units, 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 9th Infantry Divisions, 2nd and 3rd Armored, 82nd Airborne, and the 2nd Engineer Special Brigade. And listen, veterans, you will be guaranteed at least three years with the outfit you have chosen. Here they are again. 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 9th Infantry, 2nd and 3rd Armored, 82nd Airborne Divisions, and the 2nd Engineer Special Brigade. If you have served overseas after the 1st of September, 1945, you are eligible to apply. Get the details from your local U.S. Army recruiting station right away. <laughs> And now, Act Two of History in the Making, starring George Murphy as Kelly Jones, 
prominent Manhattan attorney. Having met and won the lovely librarian, Geraldine Edwards, romance, Kelly finds, still has its problems. And when you've dropped a telltale little black book, the problem can become monumental. Kelly was thinking all these things as his car, with the chauffeur Butch at the wheel, returns at top speed and swings to a stop in front of Jerry's house. Well, you're back. Uh, yes, yes, I'm back. I, I uh, rather thought you'd return. Oh, you did? Uh, yes. Well... Uh, uh, look, did I, did I leave anything here? Uh, uh, my hat, say, or... Kelly, your hat's on your head. Oh, yes, yeah, so it is. So uh, it is. You did leave this little black book. Oh, oh, that. <laughs> oh, that must have dropped out of my pocket. <laughs> It must. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nothing important, of course. Just a little data. Oh, no. Uh, uh, I happen to have uh, read that little data. Oh, you didn't? Uh, I mean, uh, d d did you? I most certainly did. Kelly, you've been hiding something from me. I, I, admit well, it. Uh, all right, I'll admit it. I, I have. Mm -hmm. And you didn't even tell me. I, well, you seem it... to have them all listed. And very complete information, too. Oh. Let's see. Uh, Betsy. Vivacious, excitable, likes to dominate. Oh. And tender, gentle, understanding. Oh. And you're so right. Uh, right? Where did you get your information? Information? Uh, Betsy Ross was like that, just like that. She? Betsy Ross, she was? Well, of course. And Anne. Anne Rutledge was so understanding with Lincoln. Oh, saved by the bell, the Liberty Bell. What was that? Uh, oh, nothing, nothing. Kelly, you've been preparing something and you didn't even ask me to help. I, I didn't? You most certainly didn't. And after I got through that marvelous Washington quotation... Kelly, don't you know that I'm interested in your work? Well, uh, of course. Of course, but darling, look. I, I want you to concentrate all your concern on, on something else. What? On me. Oh. <laughs> well. Oh, that's easy. You know, I'm a lucky guy. A very lucky guy. <laughs> That Cupid doll that we won at Coney Island must have had a couple of horseshoes inside. The next day, we were to meet at Tiffany's and select the wedding ring, the engagement ring. And first thing in the morning, Judge Patterson, who was to marry us, telephoned. Congratulations, Kelly. Oh, thank you, Judge. Thank you. I still can't believe it. Who's the marvelous girl who managed to do the impossible? Well, she's a librarian. Her name is Geraldine Edwards. Well, well, then, uh, when do you want to be married? Tomorrow, if possible. Tomorrow, nothing. You'd better get it done tonight, my boy. You're liable to change your mind. Uh, see you at 8 o'clock. All right, Judge. That'll be fine. And be sure you're on time. I don't want to be late for my lodge meeting. All right, sir. We'll be there. Goodbye, Kelly. Goodbye, Judge. Hello, Kelly, darling. Hey, Clarice. What in the devil are you doing here? Well, I came up to see you, my pet. You're so difficult to reach these days. Spending all your time reading history books at the library, so I hear. Uh, now, let's get to the point, Clarice. What is it you want? Well, I just wanted to know about this new romance of yours. Well, what do you want to know about it? Is it really serious, darling? I hear it's almost gaining epidemic proportions. Well, so what? Well, darling, why so defensive about it? Aren't you happy? I have never been happier in my whole life. Oh, <laughs> all right, Kelly. You always were such a sensitive boy. But I'll tell you what I really came up here for. What? Well, all the girls, Betsy and Anne and the rest of the gang, have planned a gala farewell luncheon for you. Oh, well, now, that's very kind and very thoughtful of them. When did they want to have it? Today, silly. This is a farewell luncheon. You're being married tonight. Now, how in the world did you find that out? Oh, you'd be surprised what you hear under a dryer in the beauty parlor. Uh -huh. Well, you're not going to turn us down, are you, Kelly? Well, I, I don't want to, except the... You see, Clarice, I, I promised my fiancé that I would take her to lunch and... Oh, well, she'll give you up just this one day, won't she, darling? Let me call her. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I'll talk to her. I'll talk to her. Hello? Oh, hello. Oh, darling. What time do we meet? I hear she's gorgeous, Kelly. Oh, pipe down, will you? What's that? Uh, uh, not you, darling. <laughs> well, what time do you want me to meet you? Let me talk to quiet, her. Quiet, quiet. Kelly, what is Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I have an office full of people here. Now, uh, listen, sweetheart, suppose you go ahead and have lunch without me, and I'll pick you up later at Tiffany's. Well, all right, darling. All right, honey, I'll see you later. Okay, Clarice, now, where are we going to have this luncheon? The Manhattan Grill. Oh, won't it be fun, Kelly? All of us dining together. 
just for old times' sake. I accepted under considerable duress. The girls were very clever. They had a nice table facing a long window with a huge poster in one corner. Everything was going fine, and we were having a wonderful time until suddenly across the street, I saw Geraldine looking directly into the window. I tried to hide behind the poster. Did she see me? She paused for a moment and then rushed over towards a taxi. I jumped up from the table and ran after her. Jerry! Jerry, wait! Come back! I hurried over to Tiffany's. She wasn't in the store. I waited there until 3 o'clock. I tried to phone her at home again. No answer. At 3.30, I grabbed a cab and hurried down to the library, thinking that perhaps she might be there. Uh, pardon me, but may I ask you... Please, please. You're in the public library. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Say, aren't you the young man who was in here whistling the other day? Yes, ma'am, but... Oh, we don't whistle in the library, oh. nor speak above a medium whisper. Well, please, I only want to ask you one thing. Has Miss Geraldine Edwards been here? Not that I know of. She resigned yesterday. Oh. It isn't the custom of resignees to return, although they have the privilege of borrowing books. I see. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And please... Shoe polish will help those squeaky shoes. Thank you very much. Oh, dear, dear. I tore over to a telephone booth and tried Jerry's home once more. She wouldn't walk out on me like this, and yet she might. After what had happened, I, I couldn't very well blame her. Hello? Oh, hello. Is Geraldine there? Why, no, no. She went to the station. The station? What station? Grand Central. Oh, what train is she leaving on? She just said she had to be at the station at 5 o'clock. That was it. I glanced at my watch five minutes to five. I ran the block and a half down to my office, meanwhile trying to catch a cab. Butch was there, good old Butch, and as I ran up, and he slammed the door after me. Oh, boy, what a sprint. I ain't seen nothing like that since Frank Wyckoff in the AAU. Now, no wisecracks. Grand Central, Butch, and hurry. Yeah, okay, boss. We're right close to it anyway. And what's the rush? Uh, uh, I've got to get there in a hurry, that's all. Hurry. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, well, I, I, I got my new suit. <laughs> Ain't much of a drape shape as they wanted, but it's, it's much more conservative for the wedding. Butch, I got news for huh? you. There may not be any wedding. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute, slow down. Well, we're here now, we gotta slow down. Wait for me. Gee, what's with that way in such a... I hurried in, frightened to death that I had missed her. And thank goodness, there she was. I rushed over to her. Geraldine. Jerry. Oh, darling. Oh, I was afraid you might be worried about worried me. Worried about you? I certainly was worried. And I, I want to explain about what happened in that restaurant. The what? In the restaurant where you saw me in, on Madison Avenue. Well, I was by there, but I didn't see you. Oh, you didn't? Well, no. That's where I saw the poster in the window, huh? announcing the arrival of the Freedom Train. Oh. Oh, Kelly, I've had such a marvelous time. All these authentic documents. Well, think of it. The original Declaration of Independence. Oh, Kelly, we should be so thankful to these great men who wrote it. Jefferson, Madison, Adams, and all the others. Oh, darling, you have no idea how thankful I am. Believe me, you have no idea. But, sweetheart, don't you think we'd better get started? We're going to make another declaration to the man in the white collar. And you know what? No, what? There's going to be history made in this declaration, too. For us, at least. The curtain falls on the final act of History in the Making. Our star, George Murphy, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. You bet I'd re-enlist if I could be with my old outfit. How many times you've heard an ex-serviceman say this? Well, the Army has a new enlistment plan for these veterans. If you've served outside the continental limits of the United States since the 1st of September, 1945, you are eligible under the new plan. And here are the units from which you may choose the 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 9th Infantry Divisions, 2nd and 3rd Armored, 82nd Airborne, and the 2nd Engineer Special Brigade. Is your old outfit one of these? If you take advantage of this offer, you'll be guaranteed at least three years with your outfit. They're all stationed in this country. And remember, there's a good chance you may re-enlist in higher grades up through sergeant. 
why don't you drop into your local U.S. Army recruiting station tomorrow and talk it over? Now, here again is our star, George Murphy, and our producer. Here in Hollywood, no man commands more respect from the people in the industry than our proudly we hailed star, George Murphy. For George is known here not only as a great star, but as a naval administrator, quick to respond to the many activities of Hollywood in the public service. George, thanks for a swell job on Proudly We Hail. Well, that's very kind, C.P., and believe me, I enjoyed it. All this extracurricular work must to keep you pretty busy. Oh, no more than anyone else, I guess. Besides, I get kind of a kick out of it. You do? Oh, sure. And my golf clubs hate me for that <laughs> statement. <laughs> now, that's understandable. But seriously, George, I'm sure many in our audience have heard the phrase, our star appeared to the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee. I think they should know what that implies. As president of that fine, splendid committee, would you tell them? Well, uh, very briefly, I will, C.P., the Hollywood Coordinating Committee is a combined effort of the industry to supply talent for all worthy national charities. It functioned during the war as the Hollywood Victory Committee. We sent stars to all the theaters of operations throughout the world. It now functions to provide public service without charge wherever needed for the national interest, and we're glad to be able to do it. Thank you, George, and let me express our gratefulness to the committee for the generous contribution in time and talent of the many stars who have appeared and are scheduled to appear on Proudly We Hail. Well, C.P., it couldn't happen to a more worthwhile and timely cause. But now, before I get away, what have you on tap for the next show? Next week, we present The Triumphant Road, the story of Catherine Vincent, who was forced to make the decision which sent the man she loved away from her, only to find that destiny had provided a round-trip ticket. And we're delighted to announce that one of the most sought-after personalities in motion pictures will join our production as star. She's lovely, glamorous, Elizabeth Scott. That's a must, C.P., and I'll be listening. Goodbye. Goodbye, George Murphy. Goodbye. Make a date now, ladies and gentlemen, to join us when your theater of stars presents Elizabeth Scott in The Triumphant Road. And until curtain time next week... This is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. George Murphy appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges the appearance of all stars on this program. Script was by Rich Hall, with the Proudly We Hail Orchestra under the direction of Eddie Scrivanek. Don't forget, next week on Proudly We Hail, Elizabeth Scott. Your theater of stars is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this more convenient time. This is Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>